Though completely different franchises, there are similar tropes that the Halo TV show can learn from The Mandalorian. How you may ask? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this and it really helps out the video and channel get some more notoriety, get more in that algorithm so more people get a chance to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. So the Halo TV show news wise has been rather quiet throughout the past two years of it being put back into production. Though there are some story points and characters that have been brought into the Halo TV show that we know for sure that kind of may hit similar notes notes as the Mandalorian experienced with this recent season. So in this video I wanted to show how the Halo TV show can borrow themes from the Mandalorian to kind of make it so you have very similar kind of enjoyment factors with it and also dive into a little history that actually combines the Mandalorian and Master Chief together and also how their story writing techniques match very similar. Now if many of you have been following the news when it comes to Halo TV show, we do know that Pablo Schreiber is going to be playing Master Chief in here, but there was another character announced soon after his announcement was the character of Quan Ah. This article from Hollywood Reporter says, Joining Schreiber is Australian newcomer Yuren Ha, who will play the newly created character in the Halo universe Quan A. Quan A is described as a shrewd, audacious 16-year-old from the Outer Colonies who meets Master Chief at a fateful time for both of them. The fact that this character was announced so early on in the production makes me believe that this is going to be a major character we're going to see within the TV show, and we do know that Master Chief is going to be the main character as well, which make me believe that you have this big soldier-like character trying to be almost machine-like, very stoic in a way, being tagged along with a much more personal, you know, emotional kind of character of Quan Ah to kind of follow him along in his journeys possibly. Now in The Mandalorian, we had a very, rather similar situation to be honest, because we had Din Djarin, who is the Mandalorian. He's a very stoic character, very, you know, true to his morals. A uh, character with clear rules and said as well, you know, that this is the way of the Mandalorian code, follows it very strictly. And it's a very strong set of rules that are easy to follow for the audience to go along with to understand this character be better. Another thing is that he doesn't remove his helmet in honor of the Mandalorian and the way of lifestyle. It's the way to kind of give honor to the armor set that they are given as a Mandalorian to honor their culture. Also, Din Djarin is a highly trained warrior. He was brought into the Mandalorians as a young age. He was never born into the Mandalorians. He was brought into them at a young age, trained to a high, be a very efficient warrior, as you've seen in the TV show. Another thing about Din Djarin, though, he's not exactly Mr. Personality, if you've watched the show at all. You know, but he does hold the people that he trusts very close to himself. He doesn't really go out of his way to try to meet new people, be very personal. He's very stoic. He's very uh, cautious when it comes to meeting new people. But later, when the character of Baby Yoda was added into the story, and he kind of joined along Din with his journeys, it kind of helped bring out the kindness and personality of Din Djarin, though not that much, but still happened to kind of show that this guy isn't just a mindless killing machine. He is a person underneath that helmet. And it just kind of showed that his kindness and strength are actually in equal measure. And one thing I want you to take note of is the art style of the Mandalorians, and especially Din Djarin's helmet. If you look at that, it may look rather familiar, not just because it looks like Boba Fett. I mean, like, in human history style, because it's very reminiscent of the ancient Spartan soldier culture. And this article written by the History Channel goes into Sparta and a little bit about their culture that they had. So Sparta was a warrior society of ancient Greece that reached the heights of power and was defeated by rival city-state Athens in the Peloponnesian War. Spartan culture was centered on loyalty to the state and military service. At the age of seven, Spartan boys entered a rigorous state-sponsored education, military training, and socialization program. But who's literally a Spartan was taken into the military around the age of seven. Well, kind of was Master Chief there. They kind of have very similar styles of characterizations as they with Master Chief, 
the character very clear rules and morals. You know, he's all about the mission above everything else. You know, he's very much about his UNSC lifestyle and following that way of life. And the people that he trusts, he holds very close. I mean, he almost has like a somewhat weird-ish, very friendly relationship with an AI, which is kind of like the main friend he's ever had. Also, and also he's very friendly with Blue Team, which are like his only friends he's really ever had throughout his entire life. And very similarly, he doesn't remove his helmet. So for other reasons, not necessarily just because it's like an honor to the Spartan armor set or anything like that, I think it's more just trying to be uh, a writing tool for a video game style. He's a highly trained warrior as well, and, and also just like Din Djarin from The Mandalorian, not exactly Mr. Personality. I mean, in Halo 4, they tried bringing that out a little bit. Cortana even posed the question to Chief of who is the real machine in this situation? And could the character of Quan Ah, that's in the TV show, bring out the humanity in Chief? I mean, possibly, knowing that Quan Ah's being Ah is kind of an angsty teenager that's from the outer colonies and the outer colonies are not exactly fans of the UNSC and government as a whole. I feel like this also might touch on a little bit of notes that we saw back in the movie Terminator 2 if you guys have seen that one which you definitely should. I think we'll probably see very similar kind of storytelling aspects right here where we have say Master Chief who would be the Terminator be a much more stoic machine-like kind of personality with the angsty teen of John Connor over here have you know being very emotional can't really even control their emotions necessarily but like in this scene in particular kind of shows a little bit of both where you get to see the humanity of john connor in this scene but then also he finds a way to kind of abuse the powers that he has of having the terminator follow along with him but it's scenes like this that are necessary for the character of kwan ah to be relatable and likable by the audience rather than just being a trope of just an angsty teen scenes like this right here in terminator 2 Joe, the reasoning behind their anger, their emotions, and that's what's needed for the character development of these two characters right here. And you can see throughout the movie of Terminator 2 that, you know, the Terminator himself becomes much more personal and adds up, ends up starting to learn more personal traits, gain more emotions, become more human-like, and also with John Connor here, understanding more responsibility, controlling himself a little bit more much like the Terminator. And much like how we saw with the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, where possibly the character of Quan Ah can help bring out the kindness and strength of Master Chief as well. The great thing about these two characters, the Mandalorian and Master Chief, is that they both act as the audience surrogate. If you don't know what an audience surrogate is, it's those characters who find to ask the questions the same as the audience. Someone who can act as a proxy for the audience within the story. Like, so the role of an audience surrogate is there just to kind of have the audience in that character's shoes. And the best way to do about that is to be rather stoic, let the supporting cast kind of fill in the blanks in a way. So understanding the broad understanding of both the characters of the Mandalorian Din Djarin and Master Chief John 117, what are the similarities between these two and what can the Halo TV show do to make sure that show is a success and not some flop? One key step is keeping Master Chief stoic. One thing, reason why is because the strong silent type is actually a rather relatable character. I'm sure we've all had someone in our lives or we might even be that person who's man of few words but when they do say something it's very profound we've all known someone like that in our lives and we've seen it used throughout storytelling this also allows the supporting cast time and area to breathe to be able to you know put their own personality in it so it's not just master chief carrying the entire show uh, letting the supporting cast reveal signs of master chief through their actions you know, signs of duty compassion honor can be all shown in the show of Master Chief. This also leaves mystery making people wanting to know more about who Master Chief is. This is what was slowly revealed over season one of The Mandalorian, where Din Djarin's family was killed in a raid and he was taken away by the Mandalorians, added into their culture, he became one of them. It can be kind of a similar kind of thing with Master Chief as taken away as a child at a very young age, brought into the military to be brought in to be a soldier. But obviously that was highly confidential and highly legal what Oni did in that Spartan 2 program. So maybe over time the cracks will show where more of him and his past will be revealed, possibly to Quan Ah or just overall to the story in general. Where Master Chief is held by duty to keep himself silent and not delve too much into the Spartan program, but possibly character of Quan Ah or just situations that they're put into reveal more about 
Master Chief and his history and his troubled past. Another thing would be to have this show be a success is to not reveal his face. Keep the helmet on. Keep that mystery. I think is what's really going to help out with this. Uh, only reveal his face if it's absolutely necessary, like what happened with Din Djarin within the show. Chief is supposed to be the audience surrogate. He's supposed to ask and receive information to fill in the audience. Showing his face places someone else in those shoes of the Master Chief and may lose that audience connection. The character of Quan Ah could very much act like a character like Baby Yoda where it helps bring out that humanity and kindness of Master Chief because it's certainly there, it just doesn't really get showcased too much because he's too busy shooting aliens in the face. So yes, even though these franchises are two completely different stories and stuff like that, but there are some similar tropes between them that I think that the Halo TV show could hopefully utilize, much like what The Mandalorian utilized, help bring in a new audience of Halo fans into the franchise and promote more Halo within the world, which I think is sorely needed right now. If you guys like these analytical kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. Miss any content from me? Check out the videos on the screen right over here. The link to all my news and informational videos. If you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, or you want to catch up with everything going on with the Halo TV show, it's all right there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.